Thinking back, let's look at five possibly embarrassing teen year memories of music. Stick around. <laughs> Okay, so what I was thinking with this was um, there. When I think back to my teen years, um, high school years, uh, and music, there are some things that like immediately pop, immediate memories that stick out. Now, if I think harder, there are other memories that stick out. Going back a little further, maybe, but there are some that immediately come to mind. And so today, I was thinking what would be like top five so I thought real quick without giving it much thought because it was supposed to be five top ones that just come to mind memories musical connections you know how when you hear songs it reminds you of situations in the past well there's albums that do that I'm sure everybody has this you have a memory of where you were when you heard that or you have a memory of listening to that or anyway it along that lines I'm sure everybody can relate what I wanted to share and these can be somewhat embarrassing because of some of the things looking back that we did at the time wasn't embarrassed not really embarrassed but it could be looked at as kind of silly but we were kids you know we're talking uh, you know 15 16 uh, we were we were kids and things that we did um, but going back and real quickly looking at uh, what I could remember off the top of my head of some key things I'm like yes I remember doing that this is what I came up with so this is just gonna be a little fun hopefully you'll enjoy a little trip down my memory lane Sammy Hagar three lock box okay so came out in what 82 I believe it was now back in the day we used to listen to all of the uh, radio shows like what was it like rock line and and they had weekend shows where they played all kinds of rock stuff and I think it was was it rock line if I am I remembering correctly correct me in, in the comments below but they would play when albums like this would come out they would play almost the whole album intertwined with uh, clips of interviews from the artist um, and to be honest I think this was probably around the time where I really became uh, aware of Sammy Hagar everybody had heard heavy metal it was from the movie of course we were too young we probably didn't even watch the movie back then when that movie came out because it was one of those things that was more adult content and we were still like 14 15 um, so I know I heard the song and you know probably had heard some songs from the previous album Standing Hampton but this was the first one we heard it on rock line and I was hooked I fell in love we used to record those rock lines and, and all the different shows because that was the way you got music back in the day if you were there you know you would record those shows and then listen to them. And I had that cassette of the Sammy Hagar thing, and I just listened to it all the time. And they played most everything from here. And it was just, the album blew me away. And it's still, I'm still a huge Sammy Hagar fan. This is still in my top three Sammy Hagar albums. If not the first, it's still way up there. Anyway, all I know is I remember back in the day listening to that interview and song segments all the time um, even before probably well because you know you couldn't take the album on the road with you but you took the cassette and I took that one because I had the interviews and it was just it was just amazing all right up next uh, also I believe from 82 uh, riots restless breed now this would have been the first riot where Rhett Forrester took over and the prior one fire down under was high up on the ranks of at that time just up there up there all the time listen to but I specifically remember when this album was out and we were listening to it I specifically remember being plagued in school one day could not get these songs out of my head could not wait to get out of school to get home to play this album again the songs were just driving me crazy I gotta hear that song I gotta hear that song now this was not when you know back in the day when you had an iPod or uh, anything your phone you could just pull up the song and listen to it in between classes this was and you couldn't really have a cassette player per se in school anyway you had to wait till you got home and this album I still have that burning memory of this album just oh it was plaguing me I've got to get home and hear it I got to get home and hear it um, this and fire down under because at the time you know this is what's weird okay at the time 
I don't think I realized that they had changed singers. Those two albums were amazing, Im just Im embedded in my mind. And so I went from Swords and Tequila to Hard Loving Man and didn't even think, hey, that sounds like a different singer. I mean, that's how, how bad it was. I eventually fell just madly in love with the vocals of Rhett Forster and the album that came after. And, you know, it was sad when he passed away. Um, but still, just these years were a blur of just, I loved everything, Riot, and didn't even think about who the singer was. So Fire Down Under, Restless Breed, two of the top ones that drove me crazy i just had to listen to them also this is where you start getting into um this is where the sort of the embarrassment starts so my best friend at the time we did everything together music together and everything um we would go in his room and he had he would have you know lights everywhere like black light and just you know random lights and you turn off the main lights and turn on these weird lights just things he picked up in garage sales or whatever just random lights make the room all lit up and we would crank out an album and one of us would sing depends on the song and one of us would play air guitar i am one of the best air guitar players you've ever seen also a great air drummer used to play this album to death loud volume one of us sit on the bed the other one you know bounce around the room singing just you know totally just going at it putting on a show well eventually that act left the bedroom and went to the front porch now you get a picture of this we're in a neighborhood you know nice rural little neighborhood and uh sitting on the front porch brick front porch you know neighbors weren't really paying much attention to you but you've got one of us on the drums, which usually was me, I think I was, uh, you know, aspiring to be a drummer at that point, and would sit on there, and this is at night, there's no lights out there, and we would have a box radio, and we would be playing guitar, and whatever, we'd be putting on an act on the front porch. With the front porch, when we moved that, we had, uh, you know, Helix with, uh, you know, No Rest for the Wicked, what is this, 83, I think we're up to now. So, here we are on the front porch, just having a ball, playing this album. We wore it out. I remember playing this to death on the front porch. Now, about this time is when we were also watching MTV and everything, and so we had, you know, the songs were, were coming on and we were being, you know, becoming familiar with them. So this was just a great time of just having at it and putting on a great show on the front porch. Okay, and then up next, same thing, front porch, dark, no lights, nobody sees us, box radio, we're at it, shout out the devil. Now, the first album, I used, I remember wearing that out. I bought it and just wore it out in my Walkman, just listening to it all the time. This came out, it was like it was like a totally different experience, and we played this on the front porch in concert, the two of us. We played it to death. I just remember, I remember you hear the intro, the, uh, the sound, and you could feel the power, and you're like, we're getting ready to come out on stage, and then now nah, we kick into it. Again, embarrassing maybe? I don't know. We were teenagers. We had fun time. Um, so this was it. Uh, this just was such a a pivotal time in life. The I think the 82, 83 year we saw just so much great music. And anyway, this was a major highlight. Now, we did that so much that eventually, the whole play and the stuff on the front porch stuff, that eventually my friend's father had picked up a bunch of spare, I don't even know what they were, planks they weren't really plywood they were old tables you know the old particle board tables just pieces big planks of pretty sturdy wood and some metal frames somehow he did this and then my friend's backyard in the corner behind a bathroom and beside the for the side porch built this stage this stage was probably a good three four foot tall and then we built on top of that using some other material, barrels or something, uh, and some other kind of wood plank, a drum riser. I have pictures. I'm sure I'm sprinkling them in here now. And now we moved it from the front porch. And then we had all these lights again that we got from garage sales. Just anything from strobe lights to colored lights to whatever. It's, this is all, you know, this is like little rascals. Uh, get all the junk you can and turn it into a major show and um old speakers we found old guitars broken guitars in people's garbage you know on the curb 
and we would take them and take the strings off anyway we didn't need the strings because it was all just fake air stuff and we would put on shows and usually it would be things like the the live shows that you'd hear on on like the rock line type shows they play things live and you could record them we did ozzy and stuff like that but the one album that i recall playing to the point where i was getting sick of it i'm like we i don't want to play that again and we'd have friends come over and they'd watch and we put on shows and sometimes we'd have other friends that would come and act with us we have three guys on stage we have a second guitar player again i have a couple pictures i'm probably sprinkling in here but anyway when this album came out it was a, it was a game changer too it was just uh you know pyromania but we played it the whole album we would get out there and play the whole album so we became good at you know air playing but it got to the point where you're just like okay i don't want to do that album again i'm so tired of that album we played this to death because it was great um yeah we had the previous Def leopard albums yeah i still love them to a degree the first three are still like my favorite when they were really hard rock um but this one was just it blew us away it came out we played it to death now the next one this is a bonus one this is a bonus sixth memory and this one is going to only pertain to me even though my friend was involved now my friend um that friend of mine my best friend i went in the military left home and we stayed in contact for a while then i kind of lost contact i got married he got married we moved away blah 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 i came back home 18 years ago back to my hometown here in virginia um but never really hooked up with him he's still in the area and occasionally we would run into each other um and then like i think it was a year or so ago i had an extra ticket to a concert uh and i said hey you want to go with me he said sure so we've been kind of online you know social media hooking up a little bit and he has gotten back into buying you know vinyl and i've been trying to convince him to come on the show with me because then we could share these memories from our childhood but i mean it's been 30 some years since we really have hung out but uh anyway i don't know he uh for some reason doesn't take me up on the offer but okay so one thing we used to always do as kids was we'd go out in the street and play frisbee we just got there and throw frisbee play frisbee tricks back and forth we have a box radio cranking out music we take turns playing music and i used to crank this album he didn't really know anything about the band he wasn't really into it again we were more melodic metalheads but i picked this up i don't know why i was buying all kinds of stuff from the indie releases and used to pick up all kinds of stuff i picked up this album now this is before anybody even really knew who they were at least in the virginia area obviously they were bigger in california um had the original album i remember i heard them on metal massacre um i don't know they looked cool i was buying anything that looked cool and i fell in love with this album and i learned lick for lick every air guitar lead everything on this album wore it out my friend had not so much known this so i'm out there in the middle of the street and he went in the house i mean he i remember this this is one of my childhood memories specifically he goes in the house to get something i don't know what it was he comes back and he's and he's looking at me in the street through the door and i'm just going at it i am just going at it i am shredding guitar solo just going at it and he just shakes his head he's like this guy's nuts he just thought i was crazy now of course everybody's a big metallica fan but this was before this was i was cutting edge in my neighborhood um and i do have stories to tell about that i i really kind of was uh, around school and everything but that is the bonus track is just my friend thinking i was kind of nuts because i'm out there shredding to the metallica kill them all before anybody knew i knew it was cool before anybody else knew it was cool yes i'm saying it anyway that's all just want to share a little memory go down memory lane it's a quiet sunday afternoon figure i'd share thanks for joining me rock on